Good morning, folks. Website members have known for at least 30 days that the end of the month would produce an uptick in solar flaring due to Mercury and Mars coming into heliocentric conjunction. The pure EUV and X-ray view of 94 angstroms look calm for days, but the flashing has returned as the sun indeed ticks upward in activity, including one that reached up towards the M-class flare threshold. Let's also note a towering longitudinally oriented plasma filament presenting on the southeastern limb. When we come to spaceweathernews.com to check in on 193 angstroms, we can see that the uptick in flaring has yet to produce any Earth-directed ejecta. Couple minor CMEs from the western limb, but nothing really significant at all. In the past couple hours, another small filament released just on this side of the limb, but it too will miss as it is sailing southward in the heliosphere. Coming in to check on the sunspots reveals one center disk worthy of analysis, unlike our fickle departing group there. The Earth-facing spots have been consistently quiet as can be, no magnetic mixing whatsoever. Solar wind looks angry, but in truth, we're seeing a drop in density with speed maintained well within normal range in Earth's magnetic field, all aces this morning. That is not expected to continue, however, as the current coronal hole is likely to affect Earth with its speedy stream in the next couple of days. Tough to tell if that northern patch will reach down to Earth, but that last bit on the left at the equator, virtually no chance of missing. That's the end of the positive openings in this coronal sector. Top news article of the day is discussing a massive gas cloud ejected from our system that has now regrouped and decided he's going to take a run at rejoining our galaxy. Updates on his success or lack thereof coming in approximately 30 million years. The crux here is that we seem to have a lot of dwarf structures in and around the Milky Way, including the Sagittarius dwarf. They're all a highly underappreciated aspect of our system dynamics. We've got weather in all our top viewer locations today. That low dipping into the Midwest U.S. is strengthening into yet another significant winter storm. Across the pond, the convergence between high and low will drive Atlantic moisture down onto Europe for at least the next 48 hours. And down under, that's a cyclone at Port Headland in the northwest, but an even stronger weather danger in the southeast where high winds and storm conditions have local governments issuing serious alerts for the residents. Folks, if you haven't checked out the free videos on the homepage of suspiciousobservers.org, you can get caught up with the other quarter million of us in virtually no time at all. And also, if you're new here, be sure to check out magneticreversal.org. We'll catch up on one of the two most important challenges from our natural world. It will be a topic heavily discussed at Observing the Frontier, along with imagination-revving talks from our favorite observers, university professors, and top scientists in our relevant fields. We are just one day away. We've got current global conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 4 a.m. in Phoenix, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.